Hello and happy midweek. I hope you're having a good week. Well, on the heels of the news that a 16-foot coffin has been discovered in Nara, um, and that coffin, it comes out, the 16-foot co- wooden coffin is inside a 20-foot ceramic sarcophagus. But the coffin is only 16 feet long, and they say they haven't opened it yet. Hmm. I wonder about that. Anyway, I wanted to go back to Bingo Akasaka to look inside that open megalithic tomb again with the idea of a 16-foot coffin in mind. And volunteering to come with me was my good friend Yuki. Now, the first thing we found as we went up the hill was a fresh roadblock. Fresh roadblock wasn't here last autumn. And right by it, a split sapling. Healthy wood, about as thick as my thumb. Recently done, the wood was wet. And we haven't had any storms or any bad weather here. We came across that megalithic wall again. We were here last summer, which we think, Yuki and I think, is the exposed wall of a tomb. Here the earth mound has just washed away. The stones are megalithic size, too big for Japanese history. And they're the same size as we're going to see inside the tomb up top. The same methods used that we can see. The gaps between the stones are bigger. So when they were putting the thing together, they cut the stones so they fit together uh, nicely on the interior. And then they don't worry about the exterior wall so much because that's going to be buried under earth. Right across the trail. Yeah, that's a definite edge. And a wall. So that's the top of a wall. And another wall starting above it. You see that? But then... On this side, it looks just like a spill. Yeah. Just a chaotic spill. But this has been carefully built. Mm. And the torn open trail itself. We think that the weight of the tomb, the weight of that great wall, and the tomb behind it is pulling the hillside down. On the way up here, we passed a few collapsed or possibly ransacked tombs. And we walked right on top of some closed ones, we believe. Improbably placed items. Notice the vertical stick woven between the tines of the fork in this stick, the diagonal stick. It's jammed in there with force, requiring hands, fingers, and opposable thumbs. I'll tell you, Yuki came as a friendly, respectful, Hebegon skeptic. She was more interested in the megaliths Uh, When she woke up on this morning, she put the probability of Hibagon existing at around, well, around 0%. But confronted with things like this, she was able to see for herself the impossibility of its being done by regular known animals, deer, bear, 
pig, rabbit, bird, termite, and the unlikelihood of its being done by man, because we are on a very unknown, untraveled trail. So the number of humans available to do this is very small. And then what human stops to rearrange forest items this way? Yes, it's possible, but it doesn't fit well with observed and experienced human practice. It feels weird. Uh, Yuki got this all on her own. We decided to check out that ancient mine first, the one that's uh, accessible. And on the way up there, we found our next fresh roadblock. We climbed up as far as we safely could. We did not find any tunnels. We were looking for tunnels. We've heard that this mountain has uh, approximately, or estimated, 30 kilometers of ancient mining tunnels. Couldn't find any, but we did find more items moved around. These trees are not so big. It, it's possible that a human could move. I could move them around. But who would be doing that? And for what? And for what reason, exactly? Broken timbers, not cut, broken, always broken, and not old. We wanted to go higher, but we needed better equipment. And... We needed Smokey. I got to go back with Smokey the fireman and his ropes. So we went back down. Okay, what we'll do, we'll just stay left. And as much as you can, stay near the tree. If you start to slide, just go flat. I gotta tell you a secret too. I'm extremely afraid of heights. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna plant myself here and I'll catch you. Okay, I'm. You're okay? Yes. Maybe it's, this wood is better for me. Okay. Just stay left. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, use the tree. It looks very painful. No, no, it's soft. It's soft. It's soft? Yeah. Ah, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Stay left. Stay left. Slippery here. Mm -hmm. Found more manipulations of the environment. Just pushed right through all there. In the textbook of Sasquatch Bigfoot structures, they call this the long sword. They have names for all these different mm -hmm. structures and more collapsed or ransacked tombs. It's taller than, it's a lot taller than me. Yeah. Looks about three, four yeah. meters long. Yeah. So this looks like the side and then the back wall oh. of a Kofun back here collapsed. Yeah.
Another collapsed Kofun here. Looks like one or two up there too. But this is perfectly, this is the same kind of shape that we see in the Kofun up, up the mountain. Lintel, I guess you'd call it. This is something we cannot do in summer. Uh. Oh yeah, oh look at this. Hey, somebody's collecting sticks back here. Mm -hmm. Just collecting sticks. This is, oh. look at this. Yeah, somebody is placing the wood back here. Mm. It doesn't just fall like that. Look here, Yuki. Yeah. Somebody just put this this tree yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. in the tree. Mm -hmm. Someone decided it should go there. See, some of these collapsed kofun mm -hmm. could make kind of a nice shelter oh. for wild animals or wild people. <laughs> and somebody has been rearranging the area. Look at, look at this pile of sticks back here. Somebody just collected all those. Yeah. Then it was up the trail to the open tomb. <laughs> you okay? Slippery. Yeah. <sighs> Stay left. Here it is. Here we are. See, if you were walking on top of it, you'd never know it was here. See that top stone? That's the same shape we saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the same shape. Well, let's go in. <gasps> knock, knock. 
See, these side walls look like those giant stones on the hillside mm -hmm. coming up. That looks almost like a pillow <gasps> for a giant. Mm -hmm. So we have a sort of a vestibule area here, a ginkan type area, <laughs> a step up, mm -hmm. and then either a step up again or uh, a pillow. Mm -hmm. Now if this were a tomb for a normal sized modern human, you could lie them sideways back there. But if they were five meter long giants, that would be the pillow mm -hmm. yeah. and the bodies would Maybe reach to here. Seeing it again, it fits equally well as the tomb of a six-foot-tall man or a 16-foot-tall man. I can see it both ways. What I cannot see is a bunch of six-foot men making it, building it, hauling the gigantic stones up the mountain. I have enough trouble hauling my own holiday indulgent self. And I still want to see an archaeology professor and some undergrads duplicate one of these things. Show us how it's done, guys, with period technology, as, as you see it. The amazingly flat-surfaced ceiling slabs we estimated to be 130 square foot each and that's the exposed surface only checking out the top here and it looks just like a regular hilltop if you came up here by one of the sides or the back and never saw the front you would never suspect there's a kofun under your feet but here's a hint trees can't grow right on top here because of the slabs there isn't enough dirt which reminded me of David's idea that the colossal lines on Mount Heba might have slabs causeways of slabs just under the dirt preventing a lot of tree growth although we did find enough broken stumps so I don't know, but I will try to probe the earth there next time we go, see if there is a megalithic substructure. It's a very good idea. All right, after this we collected the trail cams left back in September, and then we pushed way farther up the mountain, and what we found made skeptic Yuki change her mind and decide that Hebegon are real. They have to be. If you don't just ignore evidence or swish it away, if you're honest, and Yuki is honest, you have to admit that there is someone uh, in the forest or very at home in the forest with superhuman strength and hands 
that can grip things and and superhuman height because he's able to reach up higher than we can. Uh, someone like this who is busily and currently modifying the forest. Currently, because many of the breaks we found were fresh. The wood is still wet with the, with the scent of freshly broken wood. Now, matching that profile, that's a pretty short list. It's, it's one. It's one suspect. Unless you want to multiply monsters which is unreasonable. So, Yuki, thank you. Welcome to Team Hebegon, whatever your beliefs. You don't have to agree with us, but you do. And you're a terrific sport. You're cheerful, you're plucky, you're brave. And I'm looking forward to our next adventure. But I'm getting ahead of myself now. Next, we go higher up the mountain, and Yuki becomes a Hebegon believer.